Hello everyone, this is Bradley. Today this tutorial is about the melting object animation I've made earlier. The concept is quite simple. It uses simulation and the new volume grid system in 5.0. Note that we will only be discussing the most basic parts of the melting effect here. The version with directional fall requires some additional background understanding, which hopefully I will cover in a separate tutorial in the future. Here we are in Blender's node editor. Let's add a plane and a node tree. In the past, when I discussed the volume displacement, I mentioned that the advect grid node is basically the volume version of the set position node, where grid corresponds to geometry and the velocity corresponds to the offset, except we don't have selection or position inputs. Today, instead of the static displacement we used the last time for making clouds, we will run a simulation to continuously move our volume. So in the node tree, we need a geometry to melt. And uh, instead of using the group inputs, I will start with a procedural cube. It's always important to start with the simplest geometry when learning or testing a concept before moving to complex models. Otherwise, you won't know if a failure is due to a misunderstanding or just an issue specific to your testing geometry. We will use TVG to volume grid to convert the mesh into a volume and the VGG volume grid geometry to convert it back to a mesh for the final output. To preserve the cube's original shape, I will increase the volume accuracy by decreasing the voxel size to around five. Next, we need to feed this volume into a simulation zone, but the simulation zone currently only accepts a green geometry socket. So let's open the N panel, change the input socket type from green geometry to gray float so that we can insert the simulation zone now. Uh, it's very important to reconnect everything properly so the volume connects to volume and we can insert at the vector grid in between or inside the simulation zone. To create an animation, we need to set up a vector volume to offset our grid. First, we need a large enough box to define the simulation domain, similar to fire or fluid simulations, where you need a bounding box to limit the domain. Otherwise, your liquid might go to infinity and slow down your computer unnecessarily. So I will create a cube size like 555 and uh, use an offset origin to raise it above the ground and convert the entire box to a volume using TVG. Inside of this volume, we will prepare a gradient based on height since higher volume should fall downwards while volume near the ground should spread outwards. We will use a bounding box for then a field to grid to map this fourth onto our existing volume. Let's input the volume topology and the fourth. You will see a gradient on the x-axis. Let's switch it to the z-axis and flip the direction. Now from the top, the value starts from zero and at the ground, they reach one. I will use a float curve to exaggerate the interpolation and enable auto clamp to prevent overshoot. The goal is to create a volume where uh, the majority of top region is slightly above zero. As you see, there's a faint volume and uh, the narrow bottom region is one. We will use this gradient to define the vector offset. So let's set up a mix node and uh, we change that to a vector or velocity based on this gradient. In the top area, we need to drag the geometry downwards. So we input 0, 0, negative 1. Here, I notice our initial cube was not on the ground. So let's move it up with the same offset origin. Now in the viewport, you can compare and contrast. You will see that with the offset, the volume has been dragged downwards. Right now, the scale of being dragged downwards is quite exaggerated. So we can scale down the vector using various ways. For example, a simple uh, scale vector mass nodes will do the work. 
However, we also have time step on the advect grid node for the exact same function. Usually we use delta time for a consistent and small enough value, but for simplicity, I will use a value position in which in the advanced option, we have a delta time toggle. So now let's increase the duration for our animation. Let's play the animation and see how it looks. I will scale the value to about five times and play the animation. You can see we have completed the dragging events until it stops at the area of one. To make the volume spread outwards, we need to define our vector B, which there are probably many methods to do yet, but I think the simplest method is to duplicate our TVG and switch to SDF grid. SDF grid is a very specific type of volume measuring the distance from the surface. You use bandwidth to define the maximum distance of your measurements, and uh, you see that farther the distance, higher the value. And uh, we can use this gradient with the grid gradient node to construct a vector for offsets towards the higher value. Now, even without animation, you can see there's already a spreading outward offset. And by playing the animation, you can see it spreads outwards. Here, I don't want it to expand downwards. So I will simply limit it on the ground by multiplying this vector with 110. Playing the animation, you can see melting event will stop at a boundary. This is because our SDF grid only expands the boundary up to this distance. To improve it, we can use the dynamic volume from the simulation zone. And to convert the volume grid back to geometry, we can use grid to mesh and then input it back to TBG. Now, when we play the animation, you can see it's completed. So overall, we have the gradient driving the animation. And in the next frame, due to the nature of simulation zone, we have the animation going back to drive the gradient of spreading out. This is basically it. Finally, you can smooth the position. Finally, you can do some polishment, such as smooth position to make it more organic or more liquid-like. I also added a collision deformer with an additional plane as the ground, import it to the node tree, set it to relative, so that this function clips some underground portions nicely. As for the change of melting materials, I've considered many methods, including using bounding box evolve. But I think finally the best property to describe their temperature is by their velocity. If you are running downwards, you are probably cold. If you are spreading out like a real fluid, then you have a higher or different temperature. So here I will output this velocity value to the simulation. Replay the animation to run the simulation again to cache this new output. And we run a dot product for measuring 001 by default and the sample grid to transfer this information to our mesh geometry. You can also blur attribute to mix them more properly. And finally, store named attribute and set material using these attributes. So overall, this isn't a complex tutorial. Although we have only discussed some very basic cases about uh, simple melting on a flat ground. As we mentioned at the beginning, we are using a cube to prove the concept. You can definitely switch it to a more complex geometry such as Suzanne. So here we can do that. So let's add a uh, Suzanne monkey and we rotate it a little bit, import it into the node tree, and let's replace the entire function of cube and offset origin and playing the animation, you can see you basically finished it. So the setup is procedural and it's your own choice and responsibility how you um, improve or change the setup.
Similarly, you should make it more complex for trickier surfaces and so on, instead of a flat ground as we have here. These are the things you have to think about how to deal with the velocity and the related aspects. Today, this is more of a practical usage of other vector grids in simulation zone, field to grids, and the grid gradients in combination. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll probably see you next time. Bye-bye.